Hi, this is Mauro from PremiumForTech.com and on this video we're going to take a look at the new version of Microsoft Edge built on the Chromium project and the Blink rendering engine from Google. At first glance, Microsoft Edge share many of the same designs found in Google Chrome, but the company has been adding its own design changes and features for the product that looks a lot like the old browser, but it works just like Chrome. As the new browser evolves, we're going to see many design changes, so what you see in this video may look different in the final product. Also, Microsoft is currently focusing on basic features, which means that a lot of the features have been disabled or they're yet not fully implemented. After installing the Chromium version of Microsoft Edge, you will need to go through the setup process that allows you to quickly import your bookmarks, history, and password from your current default web browser, such as from the old Microsoft Edge or Google Chrome. As you can see right here, you can start with your data or you can start from scratch. I'm just going to select this option and if I want to import and sync my, my information across devices, you can click this option. And here you can select what do you want to import and from which web browser you want to import it from. You can also enable all the table sync, but right now I'm just going to leave it turned off. Before you can start using the browser, you also get an option to customize how the default tab looks like. You have three options. You got inspirational, informational, or focused, which is the option that I'm going to be using on this video. Once everything has been configured, if you have been using the old Microsoft Edge or Google Chrome, the experience will feel really similar, which means that there is not a huge learning curve to understand this new browser. The browser looks very similar to the traditional version of Microsoft Edge, and the way that you open and close tabs, open main menu, and the new tab experience worked just like before, but without the set aside feature. And there is even a new profile button that allows you to access and manage settings and switch profiles. So yes, in the new Microsoft Edge, you can use different profiles just like Chrome. When you open the browser settings, that's when things start looking a little different. In this new version, the settings experience is similar to the Chrome experience. Instead of a flyout pane, the settings are now laid out in a full side page with the left navigation pane. There is even a search box at the top that allows you to quickly find and manage many of the settings on this new version of Microsoft Edge. In the profiles page, you can add, remove, and edit your profiles. You can also control many aspects such as the uh, sync settings. Currently, you can only sync your favorites across devices, but in the future, Microsoft is going to extend this functionality to other content, such as extensions, history, and open tabs. In addition, you can control your saved passwords, payment information, addresses for out of fail, and you also have an option to import data from another browser, which we already did at the beginning of this video. In the appearance page, you can customize the home button, favorite bar, fonts, and more. But you can't switch to the dark mode just yet because it's not fully integrated. However, on in this first preview of Microsoft Edge, you can enable dark mode, but you will need to use the advanced settings, which you do that by going to Edge and then go to the flags section and then just enable the Microsoft Edge theme and restart the browser. Then we go to personalization and switch to the dark mode. And you will see now that the browser also follows the thin mode on Windows 10. On the startup page, you can select the startup behavior of the browser, such as if you want to pick up where you left off and more. The privacy and services page houses your settings like do not track requests. You can manage certificates and Windows Defender smart screen. And here's where you can also control and delete cookies, browser history, and other data. At the bottom of the page, although it is not really intuitive, clicking the address bar option will take you to this page where you can control how search works on Microsoft Edge. And here you can select the search engine that you want to use with the browser. By default, you only have Bing, Google, I added it myself, going to the manage settings and clicking the add button.
in the sites permissions page is where you can control permissions that websites are allowed to access such as microphone, location, cookies, Adobe Flash, camera, and others. In the downloads page, you can change the default location where files from the internet that you download will save automatically. And you can also enable or disable the prompt to save each file before downloading. In the languages page, allows you to add and remove display languages to use in the browser. And you can even control the spelling settings, but this feature is yet not fully functional. You also get a printing page, but right now it only includes a link to manage the printers using the control panel settings. On the uh, system page, similar to Chrome, allows you to control if Microsoft Edge can run in the background after it is closed for faster setup and performance of the browser. You can even enable or disable hardware acceleration, and you also get an option to open the proxy settings if that's something that you need to configure. In the reset settings section, as the name implies, allows you to reset the Microsoft Edge settings when things are not working correctly or you just want to start from scratch. Finally, the about page includes the version number and other information about this new Chromium browser. Of course, the Chromium version of Microsoft Edge also ships with support for extensions. In addition, this browser also supports Chrome extensions from the official Chrome Web Store. You just need to enable this option and then go to the uh, Chrome Web Store, find the extension you want, and then you just add it like you do on Google Chrome. If you want to add extensions which are built for this new web browser, you also get an option to add extensions from the Microsoft Store. And again, just select the extension you want, click the get button, and then you just add it to your web browser. From the extensions page, you can also view some of the details about that extension. You can remove it if you don't need it, or you can turn it off. In the short time that I've been using the new version of Edge, I'm pretty impressed with what I'm seeing and where the browser is headed. But I'd be noticing some loading problems. Uh, for example, some pages will finish downloading, but it will take a moment for the website to actually appear on the screen. And as you can see in this particular device, the browser is not rendering the text uh, correctly because it's using a different weight for the uh, font. And I'm using this same browser in another computer and I don't see this issue, but it is an issue on this machine. However, overall, it seems like a great browser so far, and I cannot wait to see the new changes and features that Microsoft is planning for its new Chromium version of Edge. So what do you think about this new web browser? Tell us what you think on the comments below. Remember to like the video, leave your comments, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet, and I just hope this video was informative for you, and I would like to thank you for viewing.